Yeah, so your feet are the width of the mat, your toes flop open, your palms face up, your shoulders broaden across the mat, you feel your lower back. If it's available to you, close your eyes. It's not available to everybody. Yeah, close your eyes. And I just want you to feel your breath kind of running through your body. And then pay attention to your thoughts for a second, because generally it's like a, it's like a, you know, a race in your brain. <clears throat> See if you can just kind of shut the thoughts off. It's almost virtually impossible for them to completely stop, but that's the goal of the practice. Is just to come become a little bit more aware of thinking a little less and feeling a little more. That's kind of the concept. Your breath as you move through the practice is known as ujjayi breathing. Inhale through the nose, through the back of the throat, and you exhale through the nose, through the back of the throat. We try to avoid kind of like panting breath. This breath, ujjayi, is great for your central nervous system, calming us down. Just a few more cycles of breath so you can begin to feel without judgment and allow. So blink your eyes open, grab the block dies. If you have, if you don't have one, you didn't listen to instructions, let me know, I'll throw you one. Uh -huh. So the block's gonna go behind you. Yeah, Amy's got it. Arms are gonna go up over the top, uh, top of the head. So I've been doing this, this little sequence here since day five of my surgery with like only one leg. And I really do notice a difference with my lower back. So what I want you to do is think arms straight, hugging this block with the block in between your palms and the arms are straight back. Now, if you've got limitations with your shoulders, obviously they're not gonna hit the floor. So just listen to where your body needs to be. I want you to wiggle your arms kind of back towards the back edge of the mat and then point your toes. Yeah, so you're just feeling the length in your body, feeling the space. Now you notice you automatically like hold your breath. Don't do that. Breathe through your nose and find extension. Now the goal is to find a lot of length in the body, less depth. So this is an abdominal exercise. So what we're gonna do is, is keeping the lower back down, the block firm in between your hands, you're gonna reach your block all the way forward and, up, and you're gonna pull up just a little bit. The neck is gonna stay neutral. You're gonna take little baby pulses forward. Yep, your feet can stay pointed or flexed depending on how you feel. And you're just gonna crunch up, one, two. Neck is neutral, look up towards the sky, three. Keep the arms really straight, four. The slower you move, the better off you're gonna be. Mm -hmm. Four, five, I'm just gonna stay down here, it's kinda nice. For six, breathe, for seven. Lower back stays down, eight. The slower you move, the more you'll feel. Uh-huh, you don't have to stay with my count. You could do 55, you could do four. Just counting to keep us together for another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. It's isometric core, four, three, two, one. Keep the arms the way they are for a moment. Your right leg's gonna stay, your left leg's gonna stay down, your right leg's gonna go up. So you're gonna split the legs apart. You have to let go of the block for a second. The block goes behind you, behind your right thigh. I like to point the toes here. Yeah, and you're gonna pulse up. One, two. If this doesn't feel good in the lower back, left leg will bend in half. You could try that, Pat. Yeah, reach forward. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, keep going. The slower you move, the more you'll feel for another five, four, three, two, one, switch legs. Go for it for 20, 19, 18, 17, slow, 16, 15. Your lower back spreads across the, back, the, the floor. Your arms are really firm. You're holding onto that block. Your neck is neutral, look up towards the sky. Your breath is flowing, you feel something. You feel nothing, you're bionic. Yep, keep going. I lost count, so let's go for another seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Both legs up, block stays up, reaching for the toes. Arms stay straight, legs as straight as they're gonna go. You can point your toes. You're gonna pulse that block up. One, two, 
three. Try not to let the back of the shoulders and the head hit the ground. Four, five, you got it. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Arms go back behind the head. Uh huh. These are like a little arm, like backwards kind of curl. Yep, legs stay up. You're going to take the block towards the, the front of the shins, and then you're going to lower the shins down and the arms reach back. So it's just a small little crunch. So the legs and the arms go out and open, and then you pulse it up. Legs stay straight if possible. Good. Arms back, legs down, bring it up. Sometimes I keep my neck and my shoulders down. You could do it that way, Chrissy, so you don't have to feel like you're tugging into your neck. If you want more intensity, your shoulders lift up. Uh-huh. Keep going. This is what I, I spent a lot of time at home alone. So this is what I was doing all day, <laughs> all day, all day long. And then my nine-year-old comes home and she's like, let's go, let's do some abs. Right, keep going. Slow and steady wins this race. 10, nine, you got it. You could do less. It could just be a very baby movement. Just a really small movement. You got it. Five, four. You have, you're jacked up on coffee. You're going all the way. Yeah. You got it. Nice. Three, two. Nice, Megan. One more. Hug the knees in towards the chest. Rock and roll a couple times. Cross the ankles. Step to down dog. Take up a lot of space in the mat. Downward facing dog. Have your hands about shoulder width distance, slightly wider if you know you've got tight shoulders. I always look at my hands, make sure the index fingers are forward, a little bit turned out. Yeah. Your feet are about hips width, maybe even a little wider if that feels better in your body. There's no right or wrong with this stuff. It's proper alignment and it's different body types. So everybody's gonna be slightly different. Good, come up high up on your tippy toes for a second. Stretch out the base of your feet. Keep the side ribs nice and long. Shoulders move away from your ears. And then slowly start to lower your heels. The center of the heel will come closer to the ground. They may never touch. Breathe. A little micro bend. Good. Movement is away from your ears. Perfect. You never want to feel like you're dumping the weight into your shoulders. Yes, I'd rather you back out. Soften behind the knees if it's too much. If it's too much, soften. Roll forward to plank. Oh, this thing makes a lot of funny noises. Plank position. Your first dog to plank can be a little funny, so sometimes you have to walk it out. This is a great little tool that we could just use at home to get people to do things. Yeah. Stack up your body. Uh huh. Take the round out of the upper shoulder, Cheryl. Yeah. You kind of want to feel like you're leading with your chest. So if you're looking at your center line, looking towards your core, look forward a little, and that's gonna help you kind of pull your chest through your body. You're holding plank. Interesting. Yeah. Do you travel this week? No, just from sitting, your left side is tight. Yeah, hold plank. You can always drop your knees down, guys, if it's too much. Neck is neutral. Breath is flowing, little micro bending your elbows. Yeah, hips go up and back down, dog. There's a lot of suffering in here today. Yes, there's a lot of suffering. Let go of your sad story and your suffering and just do yoga. Plank position, come forward. Plank position, do you do come forward? Uh-huh. Halfway to a push-up that works for you. If you know right off the bat you need to modify, please drop your knees. Elbows slide right by your rib cage. Restraighten your arms to plank position. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Come forward to a plank. Drop your knees, everybody. The knees are gonna go behind you on an angle. Yes, if your knees are jamming into the mat, you need to have your thighs on an angle, that's perfect. Lower halfway to a supported push-up. Elbows slide by your rib cage. Your shoulders never dump below your elbows, guys. Restraighten your arms to a plank position. Good. Uh, even out your index fingers, Eddie, make sure that they're forward or a little turned out. Halfway to a supported push-up. 
supported push up, halfway supported push up, neck is neutral. Re straighten your arms, supported plank. Third time's the charm, halfway to a supported push up. Please drop your knees. Re straighten your arms, supported plank. Those were better. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Look to the top of the mat. You can step, step, you can walk. If you're all jacked up on the coffee, you can just hop. Long spine, weight is forward. Exhale, fold into yourself. So if your hands are hanging like a wet noodle, you probably need blocks underneath your hands or your hands to rest on your shins, okay? Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold into yourself. Let your head go. One more. Long spine, prepare some space for your body. Hands can press into the shins. Weight is forward always. Exhale, fold, let your head go. Root to rise, come all the way up. Yeah, if your neighbor's close, you can just go straight up. Drag your hands to prayer. Drop your arms. Good, arms go straight up and pause. Arms go straight up and pause. Yes. So activate the sides of your arms, keep your neck real neutral and just feel for a second. Just feel the expression of length through your body. Neck neutral. Draw the lower belly in and up, feeling the spreading of the rib cage, anchoring of your feet. Exhale, fold over the legs, let it go. Good, long spine to prepare yourself. You can step, step to plank for this first one. Yep, halfway down to a push up that works for you. So the modified versions are great. These drop. Pull yourself through a back bend of choice. So I give you options in here. You can take up an up dog, which is great for a lot of us, or baby cobra if your back is more sensitive. Watch your neck, guys. A lot of throwing of the neck back is not going to be good long term. Keep it neutral. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Take a full breath out. Yeah, the breathing will happen naturally, but as you get more involved in your yoga practice, the goal is to pay a little more attention to it. Arms stay nice and straight. Look where you want to go. You can step. You can float. I don't know. I'd probably be crawling right now. Long spine to get me forward. Uh-huh. Exhale, fold. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky. You're just moving with ease in your body. Dive over bent knees forward. Fold. Let your head go. Long spine to prepare yourself. Step, step, or float. If you're going to float, you land in low push-up chaturanga. You modify the push-ups if you need to. The up dog is smooth. Don't throw your head back. Hips go up and back, down dog. Each one gets a little better. And if it's not, just tell yourself it's getting better. <laughs> Long spine. Yep, right here in this down dog. Look where you want to go. Step or float to the top of the mat. Why is my brother calling me? Should we FaceTime him? Long <laughs> spine to repair. Exhale, fold. Yeah, root to rise. Come all the way up. Dive over bent knees. Forward fold. Long spine to set you up. Step or float through a vinyasa of choice. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back. Downward facing dog. Each one gets better. Arms stay straight. Look where you want to go. Step or float. Top of mat. Get there light. Long spine. Fold into yourself. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Keep going. Arms go straight up. It becomes a meditation. It's a moving meditation. Dive over bent knees. Forward fold. Let your head go. Long spine to prepare. Step, step. If you're floating, it's a real light float to a low push-up. Not for everyone. Up dog, smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. Your hips are coming up really high. Your spine is long. Look where you want to go. Step or float, top of mat, get there light. Long spine, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Hands to prayer at heart, drop your arms. One more, arms go straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare, step or float through a vinyasa. Smooth transition through your back bend of choice. You press even through hands and tops of feet. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Widen your stance in your down dog just a tiny bit for me. 
Roll forward to a sharp plank position. Yeah. <clears throat> you're gonna take your right hand up off the ground and you're gonna tap your left shoulder without your hips moving. Keep your neck neutral, right hand down. Yep, left hand, right shoulder, left hand down. So go like that, slow. Hips don't move, belly draws in. So it's opposite hand, opposite shoulder. The slower you move, the more you'll feel. Lengthen the tailbone. You might do five of them, you may do 15. Lengthen your tailbone, Andrea, more weight forward. Go slow. Yeah, they, they kind of creep up on you. Go slow. Nice, Linda, stay with it. Five, four, three, belly in, side ribs long, two, and one, plank, right knee towards navel, right knee towards navel. You're like half pigeon already. <laughs> Look forward with your eyes, step your right foot all the way forward and through, get a big yummy step, yes. Drop your back knee down on an angle. And I say on an angle because I don't want our knee to jam into the ground. So for some reason, this doesn't feel good. You can also just do it regular, okay? Rise up for a supported lunge. When you come up to the supported lunge, make sure your right knee tracks over your right ankle. It's not sliding past, yeah. You can get a little heavier in our, your hips here, which is gonna feel good for some of us. Take your hands behind your head, like you're on a little pillow a raft floating in a pool. Yep, and you're gonna twist just your ribs towards the left. Just your ribs go a little bit towards the left. Broaden across the collarbone and the chest. You're gonna feel a pretty nice opening here. Just breathe. Keeping the legs the way they are, you're just gonna pivot back to center and you're gonna pivot down to the right and you're not moving your spine. Your spine stays straight. It's just the little baby ribs. And then you'll open up your arms. Arms go in opposite directions. Yeah, so the right arm reaches back, the left arm reaches forward, and you're just paused in this low lunge. I decided this week my music was boring. Yeah. My kids are like, <laughs> she's really lost it. <laughs> yeah. The left hand's gonna come down towards the floor, the mat, a block. The right arm will peel open. You're in an easy twist with your back knee down. Yeah. Your right arm is straight up towards the sky or it could be back if that's better for the shoulder. Integrate your back left knee up off the ground. Curl the toes into the mat and find yourself in an easy twist. You're just moving slow. Pay attention to your right hip. Make sure it hasn't gone out. It stays in alignment. Looks good. Look sideways, look up. This is one we don't want to look back because we have a tendency of rounding. Good, keep the right arm up, look down. You're gonna lean on that left hand for a version of Vashistas in the side plank. You can drop your left knee to support it. You can stagger the feet or you can step right on into it. Yeah, I like staggering the feet or modifying with the knee down. Yeah, sometimes the transitions, you know, don't work out the way we want them to. It's okay. We just do it and we move on. Nice. Top arm straight up or up and forward if you want a little more. Megan, turn your shoulder blade down to your top arm. So your baby finger will tip to the ground. There you go. Now you're in the right rotation. Firm up that bottom tricep. Reese. Someone's doing well today. Their exercise ring closed already. Plank position. Lower your knees, your chest, your chin to the floor. Sliver forward to a baby cobra. Baby cobra, you wanna slide your hands back a little? Yeah. Squeezing of the shoulder blades together, tops of the feet pressed to the ground. So you're gonna kinda of keep this action, curl your toes into the mat, integrate your kneecaps up off the ground and press to a chaturanga from here, neck is neutral. There you go, press chaturanga, plank. Hips go up and back, down dog. Roll forward to a plank. Hug your left knee towards your navel. So everything we're doing is we're moving slow, which is hard for a lot of us, right? Because we just want to like get it done. Look forward with your eyes. Land your left foot forward and through. Take a big yummy step. Walk it a little to the left. Drop your back knee on an angle. Pat it if you need to or keep the leg lifted if it feels better. Rise to a supported lunge. 
Check in with your alignment. Your left foot, your left knee are all tracking. Your side ribs grow long. Bring your hands behind your head like a little pillow. And you're going to pivot now to the right to start. Just slow. Just kind of turning those ribs and giving yourself a subtle stretch. Good. You'll come back through center slow. You kind of reset and then you go towards me, towards the left. And you'll notice the left shoulder, if it's tight, it has a tendency to want to kind of creep in. Keep broadening so you get that opening. Yeah, and you may go a little less. Open up your arms slow. So just feel. And trying to kind of keep everything in alignment. Now the arms are just open nice and wide. And you're nice and upright. Think less, feel more. Look forward, take your right hand down on the instep, peel your left arm open towards the sky. If having it straight back feels better for your shoulder, please do so. You know best. So you're in a supported easy twist. Integrate your back right knee up off the ground. You gotta curl the toes and slowly engage that back leg. Now, if your right shoulder is completely dumping down, meaning your shoulder's turning in, you need to tense your right fingertips or slide a block underneath your hand. You're heavy in that front left thigh and your left hip grips in. We're transitioning to side plank Vashistasana. The right hand stays firm. You can drop your right knee down to the ground and modify. Yep, side plank on the right side Vashistasana. Any which way that you take it, it's okay. We can play footsie. Yeah, top arm up and forward. Your baby finger tipping. So from the shoulder, turn that way. There you go. If you got a little shaking in the body, that's just the nervous system saying good morning. Nice, Chris. The alignment looks really good. Two more. Plank position. Halfway to a push-up that works for you. Maybe modifying is the best thing. Drop your knees. Up dog is smooth. Your pick. Up dog, don't throw your head back, guys. Yeah, I don't know where people start doing that again. Hips go up and back down, dog. The right foot lands. The back foot turns. Basic first warrior. Just step your foot forward and get yourself in. Back foot on a strong angle. When you look forward, you want your left ribs to pivot forward. Yeah. These look pretty good. Eddie, your back foot, turn your toes more forward. And then your, butt, your back ribs will turn with you. Hands to frame your front foot plank position. You decide. Push-ups, no push-ups. I don't care. It's your practice. Up dog. You can take extra too. Downward facing dog. The left foot lands on your breath, on your beat. We're all going to move a little different. Rise. Your back foot's on a sharp angle though, and your quadriceps contracted. It looks good. All right, back down we go, chaturanga push up. If you're taking, you're happy to go to a down dog too and just hold there and breathe and catch up. Meet me in a down dog and hold here for a sec. Look where you wanna go, step or float to the top of the mat, get there light. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold. Heavy in your heels for chair. Weight moves into your heels. Stick your butt back, guys. And the little, the little curve happens natural in your low back. Yeah. Arms are active. Shoot up to stand up. Drag the hands to prayer. Drop your arms. From the top, arms go straight up towards the sky. Heavy in your heels. You sit way down deep, chair pose. Dive over bent knees forward, fold, let your head go. Long spine to set you up. You can step, step to plank. You can hop lightly, chaturanga push up. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns, rise on your breath. Warrior one. Back down we go, chaturanga. Some of you are ready to go. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, downward facing. Left foot lands, back foot turns, rise. Keep it going. 
Back down we go, chaturanga. There's no rush. Up dog. Hips go up and back. We meet in a down dog. So opportunity to catch up here. Good, look where you wanna go. Step or float, top of mat, get there light. Long spine, fold, heavy in your heels for chair. Yep, weight back. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Sit heavy, chair, sit way back. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine prepares you. Step or float through a vinyasa. Smooth transition through your back bend. Hips go up and back, down dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns. Rise, warrior one. To the floor we go, chaturanga. Smooth transitions, guys. I'd rather you not take the back bend if you feel like it's going into your low back. Yeah. When you get to your down dog, step your left foot forward. Hands to the floor, vinyasa. Meet me in a dog. Step the right foot forward, back foot turns, rise, warrior one. Good, so keep your legs the way they are for a second. Bring your arms forward like you're handing someone a tray. You're up, but your body stays very upright. So don't tip forward yet. Just stay upright in first warrior, arms are forward. And we've been paying a lot of attention to like the arms being active and straight, okay? There's power to that. Wrap the left arm underneath the right arm. Just do that much. If your arms don't wrap for eagle arms, you give yourself a bear hug. Don't force your body into positions that you know don't work. Good. So you're gonna keep the eagle arms for a little bit. You're gonna pivot your torso forward about, I don't know, two or three inches. So you're in like a hovering warrior one with these eagle arms. Your back left heel is gonna pop up off the ground and you're gonna to float to a warrior three with eagle arms. If it becomes messy, you use the blocks instead of the eagle arms, but I think most of you can figure this out. Everything is neutral to the ground, which means we're not opening up our hip. We gotta pivot the left thigh bone down and the heart lifts a little higher than everything else. Soften a little behind that standing right knee, keep the eagle arms without letting your left leg touch. You're gonna to come up to stand and wrap your left leg around your right leg for eagle. Yep. You're doing it slow. If it becomes funny, you just reset. The left thigh wraps around. Maybe the foot doesn't go all the way around the calf today. That's fine. Your weight's in your standing right heel. Now you can squeeze tight and you can take more of a sleeping eagle, which is like your torso coming forward, your elbows hooking over the front of that knee. Or you can just stay more upright if that suits your body and your practice better. The weight stays in that right leg though. Your breath, you're not holding it. And if you fall out, who cares? You just try it again. If you took the sleeping version, lift your chest up, unravel just your arms, but keep your legs tight. Unravel your left leg and step back, warrior one, Vera one, warrior one, you got it. Right leg forward, left leg back. Drop your arms alongside your body. Interlace your hands behind your back. Eyes of the shoulders lift, inhale your breath, exhale, come forward for humble warrior. Turn your back toes more forward and then your left thigh will pivot forward. You can just rest your stomach on your thigh today. You can get snuggly with yourself. Your right shoulder can kind of sh get snooky inside that right knee. If you're getting down a little lower, let your head drop. If your shoulders feel healthy, you can let your hands kind of, those clasped hands drop away from you closer towards the floor. Your breath is flowing. You're gripping your right hip in and you're spinning the left side of your body forward. Anchor to rise, warrior one. Let the fresh blood flow, blood flow to your fingers, reach up. Take it to the floor through a vinyasa of choice. Chaturanga push up. Upward facing is smooth. 
Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Land your left foot forward, turn your back foot strong, rise, warrior one. So first come up, don't get ahead of yourself. There's lots of steps. So just take, take things slowly. Keep the legs the way they are. Just bring your arms, just your arms forward. The torso stays upright. Wrap your right arm underneath your left arm. Pause here. Find the right arm. Yep, find the left arm and wrap them. There you go. Try not to tug down. Lift the elbows up a little and that gives you a nice little stretch. Now, keep the legs the way they are and just tip your torso forward like two or three inches. Perfect. Now let your right heel pop up off the ground and then slowly neutralizing your pelvis, you're going to pivot forward. So first go forward into warrior three with eagle arms. There you go. Notice that all the weight kind of wants to dump to the left. You got to even it out. <clears throat> Flex your right foot strong and pivot from your right thigh bone down towards the ground. You got it, Amy. Nice. Nice, Linda. Breathe. The chest lifts a little higher than everything else, and you have to soften behind that standing left knee. Keep the eagle arms without letting your right leg touch the ground. You're going to come up to stand up and wrap your right thigh around your left thigh. And then sit. Eagle. Full eagle. Squeeze. If you feel something like burning, you're, you've hit the right spot. Weights in that standing left leg, in the heel. Then if you feel like you want to go into the sleeping version of this, which I think is fully made up. I think someone was just in it and was like, oh, what happens when you hinge forward? Let's give it a name. Right. You can come forward. If not, just stay upright and just work on the basics. Steer your left hip forward, your right hip back, squeeze. If you're sleeping in this, lift the chest up first. Keep the legs wrapped tight. Everybody just unravel the arms. Yes. Then unravel your right leg. Step back, warrior one. Nice big step. Get the arrangement of the stance first before you move on. Drop your arms down alongside your body. Interlace the hands. If you could rem remember the grip, good luck. Opposite thumb, opposite baby finger. Eyes and the shoulders lift. And then you come forward, humble. Yeah, so your stomach can just rest on the top of the thigh. Your entire right side of the body has to move forward, guys. Danielle, really nice. Breathe right here. Rip that left hip in. Yeah, the alignment is spectacular. So if you get to the pose and you're like, oh, I think I'm just kind of like hanging out, start to focus on that back right foot. Press into the blade of the foot so you get out of the arch. And then pay some attention to the right quadriceps. So the muscle around the kneecap have to lift. And then fire up the breath, because a little bit left gets a little nitty gritty. Anchor to rise, warrior one, come up with power. Bring it to the floor through a vinyasa. Clear it out for an up dog. Find your way to a down dog. Don't fall apart. Step the right foot forward, low lunge and pause. Reach for a block, left hand's gonna come to your hip. You're gonna float up Arda. So Arda and Trindrasana is a balancing pose. We're gonna go regular Arda, not revolved Arda. So the right hand to the block or the floor. Yeah, and then pop up. Regular Arda and Trindrasana. Play with the sway of your block, guys. Yeah. It could be low, it could be medium, it could be high. Side ribs long. Yeah. Turn your right ribs towards the left. There you go. If you want to add in anything fancy or fun, you're welcome to bind or just, you know, work on the basics. Stay with it. If you're kicking, the kick goes behind you. You have to soften behind the right knee, grip your right hip in super strong and keep that right foot forward. If you took a bind, release the bind slow. Giant step back, warrior two, warrior two. Yep, warrior two, take a big stance in warrior two. If you've got a fancy mat, look down, make sure your feet intersect uh, across that line in the center of the mat. If you don't, just visualize right heel towards left arch. 
And then pay attention to those left toes, guys. A lot of your left toes are winging out. If you turn them in a little, your hip's going to rotate in and you'll be able to find a little bit more symmetry. Lengthen your tailbone. Soften the shoulders down the back. Yeah. And just breathe. So, much, so many of us run away when we start to feel. Like we feel it gets hard. We don't want to hold our body up in space but just embrace the feeling of letting it get a little more challenging. Maybe close your eyes. It's like riding a wave. Keep the legs the way they are, reach way out and slide your hand to the outside of your foot for an A variation of extended side angle. So block to the outside of the foot. Let's go outside of foot. So B is for bind. Today we're not going to bind. We're just going to take the, yeah, the A, which is outside of foot. Keep bending into that front right leg. So we're not in triangle. You're bending that right leg. Yeah, bend it. Bend the right leg. There you go. So Lauren, I'd actually use a block, even the low setting, because you go down into your shoulder. Grip your bottom hip in. Turn the bottom ribs. Top arm straight up or it can come up and forward, which is going to give you a little more power from the blade of that outside foot all the way through the fingertips. It's like a bow and arrow. What you don't want to feel is closed off chest. You want your chest to stay really open. Bring your block back a little further so you're not struggling so much. And yes, and then sit deeper. I know. It's like a whole new world. Jackie, take the arm straight up towards the sky. Yes. And lean back just a tiny bit. Perfect. Stay right there. Roll your inner right thigh open. There you go. Stay with it. You're getting stronger with every breath. Warrior two, come on up. Oof, it gets you good every time. Take it to the floor, plank position. Move through a vinyasa. Upward facing pulls you through. <laughs> Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Step your left foot forward, low lunge and pause. Low lunge and pause, yeah. So you're gonna use your block underneath your left hand, forward, right hand to hip. You'll step up into Ardhan Chandras in a half moon pose. You want the block far enough away, but not too far, right? So it's gonna be a little different depending on everyone's torsos. Grip the left hip in. Turn your bottom ribs and breathe. Add in whatever you feel you need to kind of make this work for you. Nice, Pam. Maybe lighten the bottom hand. Come to three fingers or two fingers. Pay attention to the subtle things. If you're kicking, the kick goes behind you. We're staying a few more breaths. If you bound yourself up, release with control, regular version of uh, half moon, and then a giant step back into warrior two. Take a nice big step back, warrior two. You take a second to set it up. You look down, you make sure that your feet aren't all over the place. Left foot is forward, back right toes, not turn on an angle a little. Yeah, back right toes on an angle a little. And then you're gonna sit down nice and deep, nice and low into this. Roll the inner left thigh open. So think inner thigh towards baby toe. Spread your collarbone and chest and then envision yourself sitting in a squat. That's essentially what the tailbone is doing. And then close your eyes and go inward just a little bit. How can you soften? How can you kind of ride this out? It's possible. Good, you're gonna reach way out, slide your hand to the outside of the foot for your extended side angle A. Listen, you can place your block up really high this morning. You can even use two blocks and kind of stack them up. I didn't mention on the other side, you could also just rest your arm on the top of your thigh. Your outer left hip has to grip in super strong. Your right arm spreading open or wrapping up and forward. Baby finger will turn towards the ground. That's the direction of the shoulder. Most of us have tight hips, so that left hip likes to kind of scoot out. You got to hug it under and then turn the ribs. 
Keep the chest very open. Stay with it a few more breaths. Make it count this morning. Warrior two, pull it up. Warrior two, pull it up. Keep your arms very active, guys. Straighten your left leg on track. Pivot your left toes in to face the feel good, do good sign. Yeah, keep your arms open. Yeah, from your right hip, turn your right toes out towards me. I'm hanging out back here. Yes. Step your back foot in just a little bit if you know you need a tighter, smaller triangle because that's where we're going. Reach way out. I just need you to rest your hand somewhere along the front of your shin today. If you really do need your block, then you have to grab it and just move it with you. Sorry. Laura, your stance came a little too small. Yep. So what I want you to feel like you're doing is sliding your pant leggings up your leg or your skin up your leg. The back of your palm can also press against the inside of that calf. And that's a nice way to encourage that right shoulder. Yeah, there you go. To press open, perfect hand. You're not back bending. Your side bodies, your obliques are working. There's a big difference. The crown of the head is moving forward and your breath is filling the space to create this strong, powerful shape. We'll stay a few more breaths. So if you do have the block and you know you need it, grab it in your right hand and then everyone use that top left arm to pull yourself up to stand. Keep the arms active, don't let them drop down. Pivot your right toes in, pivot your left toes out. If you need to move the block, take it from right hand to left hand. There you go, it's as simple as that. And then find your triangle here. Turn your back toes just a little bit in. Yeah, hand anywhere across the front of the shin. If your back is sensitive, you go up higher. There you go, these look great. Your inner and outer thighs are working. Lila, turn your back right toes on an angle in towards the mirror just a little and I think you'll be a little more comfortable. Your breath is filling the space. If you're holding your breath, you're gonna, it's gonna get dark and ugly. You got it, do you feel that through your hip? Your TFL, yeah. Stay with it guys, two more breaths. Eyes to the floor, hands to frame your front foot. Right heel will peel up off the ground. Step to the top of the mat in one piece. Long spine right here. Exhale, fold. Heavy in your heels for chair. Chair pose. Kind of piecing it all together. Chair pose. Now, you can choose to take this version of chair with your feet together or a little separated. You pick. Drag your hands to prayer. Inhale your breath. You're going to keep a long spine. You're going to hook and twist towards the right. Now your elbow hooks to the outside of your right thigh. For some reason, the twist doesn't feel good in your body. You'll air twist, which means you don't have to hook. You just create that shape. Yeah. Now look down and make sure your feet, your shins, and your knees are still lined up, that your left hip isn't tugging forward, that your knee is moving. You got it. Open up your arms if you want more or just stay. Stay with it right here. Chair pose, pull, pull, pull it around, chair pose, pull it around. Weight stays back in your heels, drag your hands to prayer, inhale that breath, hook and let's go towards the left. So your right elbow this time can air twist or hook to the outside of that thigh. Now, if the entire right side of the body is like coming forward, you got to back out. Point your elbow, Eddie, towards the sky, towards the sky. There you go. That's going to give you a little bit of that like eh, angst to get in there. Breathe. Just a few more breaths. Some of you look so unhappy in this pose. I don't miss this posture. Yes, I'm not rushing back. They may tell me I can jump and squat now, but I'm not doing chair with a twist anytime soon. Two more breaths. Chair, pull it around. So I need your arms very, very straight. Very, very straight. Shoot up to stand up. Good. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Stand on your right leg and drag your left leg up into a tree. Keep it really basic. Tree pose. Anywhere along the instep of the leg. If your balance is kind of shoddy today, it can even be down super low, pressing against the ankle bone. Grow the branches of your tree. 
You just lean against the wall too. It's all good. Calm, effective, rewarding posture. Stay with this or float your foot away from your inner thigh. It's called floating tree. The shape of the tree stays. You just kind of move your foot a little bit away and the foot, yes, the toes point down. So it's a hip opener. There you go, but don't open too much. Mm -hmm. Without using your hands, see if you can land your foot back to tree pose, back to tree, you got it. Step down, hands to prayer, stand up for a second. There you go. Stand on your right leg, bend your left leg up, tree pose. Left side tree, yep. Right side tree, whatever side we didn't do. Some side of tree. Good, grow the branches. Yeah, hug your hips in. Ground yourself, elevate yourself. Focus on those arms, the power of your arms, but your shoulders sliding down your back. Yeah. Keep the pose, guys. And if you want to just play a little, let your right foot just kind of move away from your inner thigh. It's only a couple inches. It's just a couple inches. So the shape doesn't change. You're just working your outer hips a little. That's it. It's an awesome way to take the pose. Breathe. Keep the neck neutral. Reland the foot back in tree without using your hands if possible. Nice work. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Drop your legs. Stand up tall. Sweep your arms out and up. Go big. Dive over bent knees forward fold. Let your head go. Long spine to prepare, step or float through a vinyasa of choice. Up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back, down dog. Stay with me, guys. We're almost done. Right foot lands, crescent lunge. Bring it up. Yep. Hands behind your head like we started the practice. Hands behind your head. There you go. First, you're going to turn a little bit to the left, a little bit to the left. Yes, it's going to feel a little funny. You're not going to go that far. Grip your right hip in, stay high on the ball of your left foot. There you go. Pull around to center, and you're going to do the same thing and go a little bit to the right, a little bit to the right. Stay very upright with your torso. Spread your collarbone and your chest nice and wide. Open up your arms nice and wide here, right, nice and wide. I mean, why not make it louder? Yeah. Stay with it, guys. Stay very upright. Breathe. Left hand to the instep of your right foot. Listen carefully. Right arm up towards the sky. Yeah, easy twist. Mm -hmm. We did this before. Grip your right hip in. Okay, do this slow. You're gonna drop your back knee down on an angle. Your back left knee is gonna drop down on an angle. Perfect. So now you're back how we kind of started. Perfect. Peel your right arm back. Your right arm goes straight back. There you go, straight back, Holly. Just straight back towards the back skinny edge of your mat. Straight back. There you go. So you're kind of in a modified version. Yes, now if you can get hold of your back foot for full pigeon, you do it. If not, you just stay. Some of us need to slide a block underneath our bottom hand and that's gonna elevate you. Perfect, breathe, five breaths. Nice, Jackie, yes, a high block works great. Linda, don't force it. I know you want that toe in your hand. Yep. I have a greater appreciation for the hinge joint of the knee. Take it easy. We're not done, stay with it. Let the foot go, okay, if you have it. Take the right hand down to frame out your, your right foot. So now, you're gonna straighten your right leg. I can actually do this. You're gonna straighten your leg and you're gonna walk back. So it's kind of like a runner's lunge. Your left knee is down, okay? Take the block underneath your left hand. 
and then you'll peel your right arm open towards the sky. It's kind of a version of twisting triangle, but you're very upright on that left knee. Perfect. The block can be super high. Can you be upright on the knee? Yes. Flex the foot strong, grip your hips in. Breathe. Right hand to the floor, rebend the front leg, curl the back left knees and knee up off the mat. Uh-huh, step to a down dog, please. Step to a downward facing dog. From this downward facing dog, don't let yourself check out. Left foot lands, crescent lunge, last time today. Crescent lunge. Pick the distance that works, hands behind your head. You're just gonna pivot a little towards the right with your torso, just a little bit towards the right. Grip your left hip in, activate your back right leg. There you go. Come back through center. First you find that extension of the torso and then you go a little bit towards the left. Then you open your arms and we're gonna hold in space here for a few. Spread open, find evenness. Back leg supercharged up, heavy in that front thigh. You can always drop the back knee if it's too much. You're doing awesome. Stay with it. Reach way out, slide your right hand to the instep of that foot, front foot or to a block if you know you're gonna need it. Maybe set up with a block, left arm open, easy twist first. Okay, so keep it all together here. Hook your left hip under and slowly start to drop your right knee down. Do it slow, do it slow, do it slow. It's gonna be on an angle. And then peel your left arm straight back. Yes. And then just stay there. If you know you can get hold of your foot, this is the time you're gonna get that deeper hip opener. Right, it's not for everybody. You can stay in this like heavy in the hips and get just as much. Keep turning your chest and your heart so it stays open. And that may mean to elevate your right hand more in order to get it. Release the foot. Take both hands to frame your front left foot. Straighten the left leg on track and start to walk it out into a runner stretch. Yep, so your right knee will be straight up and down. Flex your left toes a lot. Move the block underneath your right hand shoulder area. Pick a distance, it could be up very high. And then peel the left arm open. Flex your left foot strong. Grip your hips in. This is working hamstring, TFL, and IT band. One more big juicy twist. Left hand to frame your front foot. Rebend that front thigh first. Move the block forward to the front of mat. Curl your back right knee up off the ground. Step to a down dog. Downward facing dog. Roll forward plank last time today. Halfway to a push up chaturanga. Feel yourself through a back bend of choice. Hips go up and back downward facing dog. Keep your arms super straight. Look where you want to go. Hop, skip, float. Find your way to a seated position. Sit up nice and tall. Give yourself enough space here so you can go into Dandasana, which is a, those of you who've practiced for a long time, Dandasana is a seated pose. Yep. We've been talking a lot about having really straight arms in the practice. Doesn't always work for a lot of us. This is Dandasana. You're going to press your palms firm, and it seems basic, but you're really, really engaged. You're gonna take a block. The block's gonna to go to the outside of your right calf. You may wanna start with it low. If you're ambitious, you can go medium. This, I mean, this is really ambitious. I don't recommend that, okay? You're gonna you're gonna work from Dand Dandasana. This is a seated position right here, okay? You're gonna lift your right leg up. It's gonna to go to the outside. Mm -hmm. You're gonna swing it back center, but you don't wanna move your hips and you want your arms really straight so you're sitting up in your best postural position. You got it? Flex your feet strong and lift it up, back to center. You got it. One, two, three, keep going light, four. Keep going, press into the mat, sit up tall, five, six, anyone feeling anything? Seven, keep going, eight, stand up a little taller, nine, one more, quadricep burn, 10. 
Bring it back to center, block to the opposite side. Here we go. Press, you gotta sit up with your best postural position ever. Shoulder blades pull down the back, belly draws in. Now we'll work towards this, but that's like super ambitious. All right, here we go. Over, one, two, sit up tall, three, work your core, lift it up, four, I'm counting backwards, five, six, keep going, seven, thanks for the block, eight, sit up tall, nine, one more, 10. Lay down on your backs, move the block with you, set up for bridge, mm -hmm. bridge pose. Slide a block underneath your lower back. Use two blocks, any which way that feels good to you. Bend your knees in half, bridge pose. Yeah. I like two blocks under the feet, block underneath the lower back, supported bridge. You got it. Yes, neck is neutral. Breathing is starting to slow down. If you're on a block, you can stay, okay? Everybody else lower down. Reset, and we're gonna do one more big back bend. If you feel you wanna go up into a full wheel today, go for it. If that's not on your, you know, your radar, repeat. Just repeat, bridge supported bridge, camel pose. Here we go. Flip the palms, chin to chest. You gotta iron out your feet though, that they're forward, it's good lore. Wrap your inner thighs down and under, and then lift up. Jody. It's awesome. It's a fantastic full wheel. Beautiful job. One more big breath in. Exhale your breath wherever you are. Tuck your chin. Come out with control. Move all blocks out of the way. Hug the knees in towards the chest. Give them a big squeeze in. Reach, reach for the outer blades of your feet. Pull the knees down around the rib cage for a happy baby. Hug the knees in towards the chest. You can slide a block in between your thighs if that feels better for you. But drop the knees over to the right, upper body to the left for a little supine twist. I like the double legs just because it kind of evens you out. Yeah. Roll up to center. You move your hips, you kind of have to shimmy them out of the way a little, and then drop them over to the left and supine twist, going left. Wonderful, come up to center, hug the knees in, give them a giant squeeze in, and then find your way to Shavasana, complete rest. Complete rest this morning, if you have two blocks, slide them underneath your thighs, kind of how you started the practice, but now you can really just kind of let, let yourself go into the floor. The next two minutes, just be still, just be calm.
full breath in. Loud exhale, breath out. Bring your arms up over the top of the head like we did earlier, coming full circle this morning. We're gonna repeat the whole class. <laughs> Hug your knees in towards your chest, give them a giant squeeze in. Can you imagine? Y'all be crawling out of here. Yeah, rock yourself up. Any position works, any direction works. I'm hanging out over here. Sitting up nice and tall with your eyes shut and just feel, feel the effects of this morning's practice on your body. This practice is amazing. It offers you a fresh perspective every single time you come to your mat. So that is a gift that no one can take away from you. Bring your hands to prayer, bow your head, have some gratitude. They say it's the best attitude. Lift your head, open your eyes. Namaste. Have a great afternoon. Have a wonderful weekend. See you in Florida. Bye. <laughs>